can you see me? <laughs> this video is about camper van lights. So I have a VW Crafter. I'll be changing the two light bars I've got and the spotlights I've got. The ones I've got on my van have got water in and some of the LEDs are not particularly working very well. And I've changed them. I must have changed those light bars about four times now. And I keep buying the cheap ones. So when Oxbeam contacted me and asked me if I'd do a review of their lights, it was perfect timing. So this video will go through what they offer, um, how I use them, and uh, we'll compare the standard ones, these cheaper light bars that I've got, uh, to the Oxbeam ones. And uh, we'll see how we get on. Hope you enjoy the video. Welcome to the Whippet Workshop. I haven't been in here before. Never filmed in here before. Look at this for a new toy. These are from Oxbeam. That's their logo. They contacted me, as many organisations do, many businesses contact you and ask you if you review things. But this was perfect timing because the ones on my van are knackered. So I've got uh, one of these, a small one, and then two spotlights to replace all the ones we have on my van. But I'm particularly interested in this one because as well as the wired beam you get from this, you also get a focus spotlight in the middle with these extra lenses and then another wired beam to the side. That's the smaller one that will go on the bull bar at the front and that's got the same thing, it's got the spotlight in the middle and the two floods either side. And on the roof of my camper van facing sideways I'm going to fit these and they're the same sort of configuration, there's a spot in the middle with a wider lens and the flood around the side and there's two of them. Anytime I get a request from a business asking me to review something, you go straight online if you're interested and you start to see other reviews and to see what people think about these products. And I found on the internet, I'll put a link below to this guy's channel, but I don't know if he actually works for them, but there's a guy in America who tests these to destruction. He had some small lights, not exactly the same as these, but similar that he put in a bucket of water and he left them for, I think it was 12 hours or 24 hours while uh, powered up underwater to see if the leak and there was fine. And then he put it outside and it froze solid into a block of ice and tried them, they still worked. And then he threw it off a stamp ladder to break the ice to get them back out again. And they still worked. And this one, one of these, I don't think it was this exact one, but one similar. He hit it with a hammer he stabbed it with a screwdriver and managed to get through the actual coating of this eventually with um, a big knife, clobbering it with a big knife. <laughs> he sets them alight, he drags them behind cars and they stand up remarkably, remarkably well. But I think these are going to look really, really nice on my camper van, replacing the somewhat cheap ones. And um, particularly the big one on my camper van is starting to fail now because it's got water in it and it's starting to flicker and I do use them a lot around here. The light bars, both of them, come with these type of fixings which fit in there and slide along. This is aluminium, the outer casing, and these are aluminium as well. And then there's these type of brackets that can be fastened into them. I think they've got, yeah, they've got that way and you can fasten them to your roof or to the roof rack, however's best for you. So good quality. Great fittings, I like them. I don't think I'm actually going to use them because I'm replacing the lights that are on and the holes are already in a specific place. The other thing I was impressed with, it comes with stainless steel nuts and bolts and all the fittings are stainless steel. And these are actually stainless steel. The ones on mine are aluminium and the coatings come off and they've all fussed up. But these are actually stainless steel and these are the brackets that fit on the end. If you're not using this type of if you're not using this type of bracket you can use these type of brackets that fit on the end and you can have them that way around and that way around and I think I'm going to be lucky enough that these are about the same size as the light bars I've got on and these will fit in the holes that already exist also the brackets on these are stainless steel so they're not going to rust and stainless steel and um, fastening screws on the side and this stainless steel bolt on the back here 
is a vent. So if you did get any water in this, instead of having to undo all the screws at the front or all the screws on a long light bar like that to take it out to let it let the moisture come out, there's a vent on the back so you can take this out and run it and the temperature inside will dry it out and the moisture will come out of here, which is a brilliant idea. These have got them the same, both the light bars have the same sort of vent on it. There it is on the end there. I think, I'm not sure, but I think there's actually a filter in there as well to allow the moisture to come out without actually re removing it. But you can remove it, run the light till it gets warm and it will remove any condensation, if any did get in. The old one of these on my roof, I can't remember what company it was, but it, it was just a cheap one. It's about the third one I've had and they've all filled full of moisture. And the only way you can deal with it is to take all the damn screws out, take it all apart, dry it out, and then try to seal it all back together again. So having that additionality of that screw on the back to let the moisture out is a fantastic idea. I'm also aware that people don't like electrics. So they actually come with a wiring harness. So you have a switch with a little light on it there so you know when it's on. And this is three core cable and it's in a, an outer protective sleeve it's quite long it's got a uh, junction box there so it's easier to fit when you're running the cables and all you basically do is connect this to your power supply you could do it direct to your battery uh, positive and negative it's fused there's a fuse there in a housing which is a nice strong housing and then it goes down to this relay um, so you don't have to mess about with relays. Now what a relay does in the simplest terms, it's like an electric switch, it's like an electromagnetic switch. So in a very small switch like this, see how small this is, the contacts as you flick that are tiny. And if you put a lot of power through something that small, it will actually spark every time you do it and probably get warm, warm on the contacts. And it might work for a while, but eventually the contacts will wear away and get smaller and smaller, which can produce um, heat within those contacts and make the switch melt and fail. So what they do is they put this on here. This switch switches the electromagnet in, he in here, which actually switches the contacts across, and there's bigger contacts in this which can take the power. So these are rated to actually work with the specific lights. And this is all in one unit and fasten it to the actual light bar this is the one for the big light bar it's uh, just a waterproof connector that slides into a socket like so so nice and simple easy to wire up i'm well impressed well impressed indeed and i think these are going to look excellent on the camper van people say that to make your van or your car look good you want good wheels and tires and good lights <laughs> for these spotlights it comes with their wiring harness as well so these two actually link together through this wiring harness and there's a another relay in there that will work the same way and it comes with a on off switch as well so I haven't made my mind up if I'm going to wire the them all together like they are at the moment just onto one switch or have them separate but Oxbane do a separate switching unit which enables you to switch individual lights on and you can link them in sequence and you can have them flashing in bits and pieces and hopefully I'm going to get one of those to fit and I'll do that once that comes through after I've fitted everything hopefully I'll get one of those off them and I will fit that and see how that goes as well but a significant setup there of lights so the light bar on the bottom, I don't know if you can see, but there's a, a number of the LEDs, three of them out there. And there's various gaps in the one at the top. You probably can't see it because it's such a blur. The side spotlights, that one's working all right. But that one's half, half the LEDs are out of that one as well. And it's not that bright really. It's still not completely dark. I've uh, done it now because if it's completely dark it will be pitch black but I'll do it dark when it's darker as well. So this should be relatively easy to change. 
it's been on a long while. Look how mouldy it is and all the and half of these LEDs have gone in here as well. So it needs changing. I like that, there's little grub screws in the end to enable you to lock it in position so it doesn't slide around. And thankfully the holes in the bull bar are in the right place. And they're on. So they're the standard low beam bulbs. And as you can see some of the roads around here are quite narrow and there's nothing to stop the animals running across the road. It's just out onto open moorland and you get sheep and all sorts down here, rabbits and deer. So you need some good lights. This is the high beam. So that's the standard low beam. That's the standard high beam. <laughs> I don't know what it looks like on the camera, but it hardly makes a difference. And the lights are quite yellowy. They've got like a yellow colour to them, they're not that bright. Low beam, high beam. Give okay, a reasonably wide spread, but they're not the best. These are my current lights. I have lights on a light beam at the bottom on the bull bar and I have lights on the top across the roof rack and then I have two spotlights on either side. So standard lights, low beam, standard lights, high beam and then the current light bar. So we'll do a comparison between these lights on the light bar and the, the new ones from Oxbeam. These are the new lights. They're certainly brighter. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> you can't see it all on the camera. Super bright. To round up the end of this video, I suppose uh, the question is what I recommend these lights from Oxbeam. Um, and I would. I'm quite impressed with them. The light quality is good. The quality of the manufacturer and the products they've used. All the stainless fittings. Good wiring di diagram inside and a good wiring harness. That's all there ready to use. It's just basically a plug and play. So yeah, I would definitely recommend these lights. Um, but time will tell. I've only had them on the van for a couple of weeks now. Um, there's no sign of any water or any condensation in them, but that will be the key. So keep watching to the channel and um, in about six months time we'll see how they're doing. But I think they're going to be good. As I say, that guy who tested them to destruction, <laughs> it's worth checking him out. The link's in the uh, description below. Um, has given me confidence in them. And just checking them over and having a good look at them, they look to be manufactured really well. They're not the most expensive lights on the market uh, and they're certainly not the cheapest ones but I, as I've said before, I've replaced mine that many times with the cheaper ones. I'm hoping these are going to last. The um, the people that sent me, Oxbeam, who sent me these free of charge, um, they haven't asked me to say anything particular but they haven't also sent me any of the information to go with it. Um, we usually get that after the video has been produced so if there is any discount codes or if there is a sale along or any special offers it will be down below the in the description of the video so just have a look on the tab below this video and there will be the latest information and links to the website and uh, anything else they have uh, offered to send through as a discount or a special offer. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful and we'll see you on the next one.